All right, so Coach Moran joins us now. And, Coach, let's start with that tournament run you guys made last year. Obviously, you, you really got hot late. What can lessons can you take from then and, and apply that to this season? Um, you know, I think towards the end of that year, towards the end of last year, you know, we, we had some, some lucky – some things happened that were kind of fortuitous for us and, and, you know, teams winning that we needed to. And, you know, I think the lesson that we wanted to learn is just kind of maybe try and make sure we were taking care of business and, and handling business in our own hands and not, you know, having other people have to help us get into that tournament. So maybe, you know, making sure we're not taking any team for granted, making sure we're making sure uh, every week is important and, and hopefully not have to put ourselves in a position where we're fighting for our lives towards the end there. Did that experience, though, and maybe in some of those bigger games, you think that'll pay some dividends th this upcoming season? Knowing sort of you played up against, you played Penn State, who was ranked number one in one of the polls um, this week. You know, is that sort of something you can say, oh, there's the bar, that, let's, let's reach that? I think it's good for our guys to be able to experience that that success on a national stage, and I really hope that as a staff we can make it so they're they're hungry to try and get back there. But you know, I know in our in our conference, and obviously with our our, uh, our schedule as a whole, there's going to be lots of teams you know eager to to give us a good go. Yeah, uh, you know, now you're reaching, I think, year four there, UMBC. It's sort of that cycle of seniors now coming through that you came in with. Uh, where would you say the program is at this point now that you've seen you know some classes go through? You know, I think we're we're still on a trajectory upward, which is nice. Um, making sure year four we're not getting to uh, assuming anything's just going to happen or assuming that we might have some success. You know, we really want to just kind of keep doing the things we've been doing the first three years, which have led to improvement in all those three years, and trying to make sure we're holding those guys to high standards and make sure that we're not taking the foot off the pedal and assuming anything. You know, we, we want to make sure we're, we're coaching them as hard as we've coached them, and we want to keep them as hungry as they can be to, to keep improving. You know, great that we were able to win our conference. Can we do it again? Uh, great that we got to the playoffs. Can we maybe win a first-round game? Um, so, obviously, those are goals that we have, but I'm sure their goals and aspirations of every team on our on our uh, schedule has as well. What do you like about the, some of the guys you got coming back now here in 2020 maybe that you saw in the fall? Um, I think we got a mature group. Uh, I think we got a group that, um, you know, understands that has bought into our culture, our culture really well. Uh, I think they've seen it firsthand uh, take life and give us some success. So I think we got a group that trusts the coaches and believes in what we're doing. And I think that's a really important component to having a, a successful team program and a program that's built to improve. So uh, just the overall maturity of our group, I'm really, I've been really impressed with so far. Now, as you look ahead to some of the scheduling in 2020, you know, where do you think some of the, where do you want to, I guess I probably you're a one game of the time kind of guy as, as most coaches are. Um, but I guess what is the approach as you head into February, you know, as you sort of ratchet these guys up? Well, right now we're, we're looking to finish the fall, and we have finished the fall healthy. I, I think we finished this fall about as healthy as we've ever been here in the first four years, uh, and that's going to hopefully put us in a position when we bring our guys back in the middle of January to, to practice at a high level and an elite level. That's going to, you know, each practice is going to be meaningful. It's going to get us prepared for our, our opening game versus Georgetown on February 15th. Yeah, you mentioned health, and I was actually watching one of the videos before we did this online about you talking about sort of the all-encompassing health and how it doesn't mean just being out on the field and making sure, you know, everything is working right, but it also comes to nutrition, sleep, things like that. Why, I guess, where did you find that being so important in sort of the all-encompassing health-wise and translating to being healthy on the field? You know, I think it really just stems from trying to teach these guys healthy habits off the field and uh, they're going to give them some good behavior changes moving into their adult life. Maybe some aspects I didn't get as well uh, as a college athlete. And, you know, it stems from sleep, you know, sleep, uh, hydration and um, and flexibility and stretching. And, you know, I found that those are things that are within our control. And those are also things that are going to probably be some of our best injury preventing aids possible. Um, so, you know, obviously we're looking for any opportunity to gain our edge. Uh, what can we do? What, what can we invest in off the field that hopefully will separate us in some capacity with some of our opponents? So really just trying to be healthy and being available and the things that you need to do off the field to make yourself available has, has been definitely a little bit more of a theme this fall than in, in falls past. Yeah, it's interesting. And too, probably as you get older, those things become more important too. Like you mentioned, you learn that a little bit later on. <laughs> you know, probably as you get older, trying to go out in there and do things, you need your sleep. And like you said, stretching is so important too, right? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, unless you're stuck being a 38 year old like me, that's sore from getting out of bed every day. So uh, <laughs> I, wish I had some of those habits when I was 18 or 21. You know, <laughs> that's, that's a good. I think we all learn a little bit later on what, what that all means. Uh, finally, you know, UMBC, you guys do such a good job on social media. I think we all sort of learned that a lot, a lot of ways on the basketball side of things during that big upset of Virginia. You know, what factor does that play for you guys playing into that that role? That, you know, you do such a good job yourselves too. You think that's so important why is that so important for you guys to sort of have that that brand out there you know I, I think we try to do it in, in as humble a way as we can but I, I think in this day and age you know obviously you know recruits uh, everything is it's a lot to do with content and what content you can put out there and who's gonna see it and we just try to put out informative content whether it be through uh, you know our, our, our defensive Twitter handle or Instagram accounts or through our new YouTube channel uh, things that are gonna promote our, our program in a positive and healthy way and and hopefully give insight to kind of here's how we handle our business and and maybe spark some intrigue from the lacrosse world yeah like you said get people to know you a little bit better know who you are right absolutely yeah coach thank you so much for the time we appreciate it we'll talk to you in the spring okay all right thank you sir have a good day